I studied painting at the Central School and chose printmaking as a subsidiary subject. There I learned intaglio, lithography, screen printing, and relief printmaking techniques. Hugh Stanton was teaching lino cut, woodcut, and wood engraving. I was the only student in his printmaking class, and consequently we were able to establish a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, the classes took place in a studio where he simultaneously taught a life drawing class. So picture this, there was always a nude model in the room. His lessons on handling the gougers, gravers and brayers and his methods of printing remain with me to this day. And I'm pleased to say that I am able to pass them on to my printmaking students. From day one, the lessons I learned were immense. They were fundamental. This humble piece of linoleum was a medium of enormous potential, capable of a vast range of treatments from the finest of lines and subtlest of tones to the boldest, vigorous, and visceral marks and forms. Hugh Stanton's approach was the development of the chiaroscuro woodcut technique of Italian 16th century artists such as Ugo de Carpi. For example, a print would be made from, say, three blocks, each of which would be cut and printed maybe two or three times. Each of them would be printed in darker tones, and the result was a truly polyphonic or polychromatic print comprising multiple tones and colors. Ultimately, Hugh Stanton invited me to print some of his own wood engravings and even trusted me to clean up the cuts in some of his lino blocks. And later, he gave me the metal type he'd used to print his own Gemini press books. He was, I must say, quite a colourful character. He was then in his 70th year, and I learned a good deal from him. I had no idea at that time of his role at the Gregonog Press, other than that he had illustrated some books for them in the 1930s. Had he lived to see me taking control at Gregonog in the 1980s, it would have caused him some considerable amusement, I'm sure. an artist. I can work in any medium. But chiefly I make books and my work, be it drawings, paintings or calligraphy or prints, are primarily concerned with that in mind, primarily conceived with that in mind, as images within a book. Deciding which medium I should use depends on the resources available. For example, when I moved to the farm in Iowa, my Heidelberg cylinder press remained in Minneapolis, and it wasn't until I had retrofitted a coal barn as my workshop that I could think about moving it. So I made drawings and calligraphic paintings and digital art. As it turned out, I sold the Heidelberg and it never did move. Instead, I've returned to the iron hand presses that I started out with some 40 years ago. That's an interesting observation. I draw inspiration from my environment, and in particular, the landscape. In the prelude, Work Wordsworth talks of spots of time. Our minds are full of memories, of places and objects. And my work draws on those memories. I also use photographs of places and events. 
both as aid memoirs and as direct source material. You think so? Thank you. It's not my only large piece, you know. To Autumn was the first book I made in Iowa. Because my letterpress machine was still in Minneapolis, To Autumn is a series of paintings with calligraphy that together form a large montage. The book itself is formed from digital prints of the paintings. My two books prior to this, The Prelude and Marking Time, were printed in Minneapolis and were substantial 200-page books and probably marked the peak of my career as a letterpress printer of fine books. So with To Autumn, I think I was subconsciously returning to my roots as an artist and I think its gestural calligraphy and its is in some way a direct response to the, the typographical restraint required in those two big books that I printed previously. Having also been immersed in Wordsworth for so long, it was only natural that I should choose another British Romantic poet, of course. As an artist, I am particularly interested in scale and the relationship between the macroscopic and the microscopic. The landscape is vast, but when seen through a lens, incredible details are revealed. Likewise, the microscopic, when enlarged, reveals another world or landscape. These are subjects that I'm pursuing in a similar way, both on the wall and inside the book. an interest in gardening. I like flowers. And one day, while waiting for the construction workers to erect the steel building for what would be a new workshop, I decided to make watercolour studies of a series of flowers. The building was soon finished, and consequently I forgot about the flower project. When, some years later, I was commissioned by the British Library to design Roderick Cave's book Impressions from Nature, A History of Nature Printing, I was inspired, being a printmaker, to do some more nature printing myself. In Iowa, I turned to the leaves around me. However, I found my ambition to create larger, larger designs from the prints, particularly of a blackberry leaf, were thwarted by the fragility of the leaves. So I scanned one of the prints and began to make digital flowers. These were partly based on that series of watercolours done many years earlier. The scanned leaves quickly evolved into more elaborate and imaginary blooms that even incorporated parts of flowers as I explore their structure and geometry. Eventually, they would become my floralegium, a bouquet, as you say. <laughs> 